Right, hello and welcome. So today we're just going to go do a quick video on how to update your OSD and how to uh, move around some of the items and remove what you don't want uh, just so that it's a bit clearer and a bit cleaner on your, on your FPV screen. Uh, I've already connected up the serial connector but I'll even put some pictures into the video for that. So, but all you need to do is basically joint, joint straight across directly into the pins. There's no pin swapping or anything. I'll, uh, I'll show you in the pictures. So, just directly plug everything across into your OSD. Then you need to download these two tools, this tool off the internet for the actual the program, and then a firmware update. I'll put links in the video description. Uh, and then let's have a go. So. Let's start up the OSD program, OSD config. Let's just right click on it as administrator just in case. Okay. So on here we've got all the all the uh, different parameters that you can have. So we've got uh, RSSI values. You can actually toggle on here, which I've actually set up. I'll show you how to do that. Select your, select your units, select your min battery voltage. So what we can do here is actually read from the OSD. And you'll see that I've actually already changed some units, but I'll show you how to do this. Uh, so I've changed my channel toggle to 7, changed my min battery warning to 14.5 volts and 20% and change the model type to copter up here and you see here this it's slightly different to when I just flicked to the screen before so that's the stuff that I've changed and then the second panel when you flick the switch that's what you'll see but first of all if you can read from your from your OSD you're all set up correctly you need to select the correct COM port you find that in your device manager so if you can read from it, smash in, then now it's time to do the firmware update. So update firmware, click that, then you need to find where you've got the file saved. Click the hex file open and you see in the bottom left bottom right down here it'll start uploading to the board done smash in right so the next thing you need to do now let's have a look oh no it's still got all the correct stuff the next thing you need to do is update the character set so if you just Oh, if you just switch this on now, some of these characters would look incorrect because because of the new firmware. So you need to update the character set. Double click the pre-release. And then just click the MCM file. Click open. And this will slowly update each of the characters. So the characters are things like the arrow, the house the uh, GPS lock symbol so these are all just the different symbols that are used generally now we'll just wait for that to be done so you can see here down the side all the things that I've decided to switch off you can just easily tick them to switch them back off on or off and then you can click them and move them around like that so switch that off there's some things that people might want but there's a lot of stuff that just to me uh, you don't need but once I when I start flying uh, more FPV I'm sure that I'll have to bring some of it back in so this is a setup I've decided to go for you can scroll around and go for what you want it's up to you Um, that's about it so once you've decided what you want to do save current tab and it'll write the data to the panel same again on option 2 
save current tab. That's so uh, this is just my home arrow, what mode I'm in, battery percentage and how far to home. So it's as simple as that really. Um, the next thing is this is a main page, so I select copter because I'm flying a copter. If there's ever a warning displayed, it'll switch to this panel. So the overspeed warning, um, but really it's a battery warning, so it'll switch to this panel. So then it allows you to get home, get home basically, and it's got all your all your data. <coughs> RSSI don't really use that. Not really sure. That must be to do with the the uh, Mavlink. Uh, wireless connection data but I don't have that so it's not needed for me a toggle switch so I've set up a switch I'll show you how to do that and uh, on the actual transmitter so that I can switch the mode to what I want um, max speed over speed so I guess Max speed, I don't really know what that what that means. Over speed, obviously if you're going too fast, your brightness, I haven't really played with the brightness yet. Your units, again, as I've shown, you can either decide to set a voltage warning if you want, if you just don't want it, just set it up to 50 or something like that. And show milliamps used or show percent remaining. That's about it really. So if you're happy with that, save it again. And that's it. So I'll just uh, boot up the old uh, FPV camera. Obviously, I've, you saw that in the last video, fitting that in. Uh, hat where, where I fit the OSD because it's all getting a bit busy under here now. So you know, you need to start doing having to think about where things are going. If you want to see that, then just have another look at the previous video. Uh, as you can see. Uh, it's taken a bit of a smash in the last flight. I've got a few repairs to be to do to the uh, to the quad. Um, so hopefully we'll uh, boot this OSD up and you'll see what's going on. Right, I'll be right back. Right then, so I've plugged the uh, OSD back in to the quad and into the APM. So I'm just going to power up now. I see it works up so it's showing that we've got no GPS fix at the moment so the number of GPS is zero the mode we're in just switch my transmitter on so obviously it's stabilised there lighter out hold auto Back to stabilise again and return to launch. Battery voltage remaining 100%. I don't know why it's showing 100% because it, it'll work, work that out for when you're flying. Uh, compass heading, orientation of the craft, current angles forward, left, and right, distance to home. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. That I'm not sure what that is. That might be actual altitude. And also, if you am, you get the prop up here to show that you're armed. Then you actual heading to get back home. And if I flick my switch for my other screen, there's some kind of bug at the moment. I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to have a look on the internet. But then three things that I had up before and my heading don't seem to be showing, I'm not really sure why. Um, so that's all that is, is I've just created another channel uh, which is channel 7, um, channel 7 input, calibrated it just to a switch so I can switch it on or off and just change my screen like that. It's not not that hard, it's just like calibrating any other, other channel on your transmitter. So that used to be used for things like my auto tune function and things along them them lines, um, so you can you can do that if you want. And also, when you disarm, 
when you arm, then go for a flight, and then you disarm again. What should happen is some data will come up that'll tell you about your actual your flight, but that doesn't seem to be happening. I'm not really sure why, but it'll tell you. Uh, how long the flight was, uh, the distance you travelled, your height, and then I think your final GPS landing position. I'm not really sure why that's not working to be honest, but anyway. That's about it really. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and uh, we'll be back next time with a bit of an update on the uh, flight case uh, I haven't really done much on that at all to be honest but now that I've got this all set up on the quad I really want to get that done so I'm going to uh, work on that next right then thanks for watching and we'll see you again later